Welcome to uh, Love Rugby League Weekly. It's the start of a new year. Happy New Year, James Gordon. Happy New Year, Dave. Good to be back. And First Friday of the new year. You can tell it's a new year because I've got a new little black book as well with all my notes in. So, uh, what are we going to talk about? Have you not got the list of what we're going to talk about? I was going to chuck that over to you, first of all, mate. Well, just sort of about half an hour ago, the news has come through that Nigel Wood has stepped down as RFL Chief Executive, so um, I think everyone's been expecting it for for a while. It's obviously been mooted, so um, yeah, that that news is broke. He's been there for, he's been in that role for 10 years, he's been with the RFL for 16 years, and obviously now there'll be a new, you know, a new era, if you like, and, and somebody else at the top of the pile we could have a new world order couldn't we yeah so uh, you know it's it's Nigel was expected to take on the top job at the international federation from may which is being vacated by david collier so um so yeah it'd be interesting to see what happens whether the rfl obviously they've they've said they're looking for a new chief executive whether they bring someone in from outside or whether maybe ralph rimmer steps up for it um, and that's interesting the obvious one. choice because I mean he's he, he knows the the inner workings of the RFL, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, and obviously Nigel Wood was there when Richard Lewis was there and he uh, took over. I mean, you know, in my opinion I feel like the RFL needs a little bit of a fresh almost like a fresh approach, a fresh impetus. So that's maybe where if you get someone from outside coming in, but you never know what what might happen really. Um Overall do you think he's done a good job? Um it's di- I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? I don't think the game's pro- progressed a, go- a great deal. I mean, the, the people will always, there'll always be instant, there'll always be positives and negatives, won't there? And, and people will always be able to point, you know, positive things. And I mean, we got the press release and there was only maybe three or four positives highlighted and one of them was bringing Catalan and Toronto in, um, the 2013 World Cup. Um, you know, for me, I just feel like there's been a f- there's a lot of little things floating around at the moment that are in, you know that are impacting the game. You know, all the the ongoing talk about restru- you know under, since Nigel Woods taken over, we we scrapped relegate promotion relegation, went to franchising, extended Super League, then we reduced Super League, scrapped franchising, got the Super Eights in, and we're still not happy with it. Um, so, you know, the, 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 there's that side of it as well. It's also under his watch as well that we've seen. Uh, dual registrations creeping, and uh, that's a, yeah. a great vein on rugby league, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and obviously you've had all sorts of, you know, all sorts of, of other little things going on, and you know, like I say, it's not not all his fault necessarily, but I think it's probably the right time, and it'd be interesting to see now. It, it's an, it's a funny time because obviously we've been told that there's going to be this, we're told that there's going to be changes, aren't we? Or we have been told that they're looking at the system, but you know, it'd be a funny time to be looking at that now before. You know, surely there'll be no changes before somebody else comes in with their their own ideas. You'd think, and it makes you wonder as well with rugby league and how they they look at these things, whether they'll give somebody a blank canvas or whether there'll be something like a, a plan already in place. I mean, rugby league and plan plans have hardly been easy bedfellows down the years, have they? Yeah, I mean, well, and that's the. I mean, the thing is, is the bottom line is, is that you know, I mean, I've wrote it, I've wrote about it plenty of times where you know the game has probably not progressed. As it should have, you know. You look even like the TV deal and stuff like that, and you know the lack of championship on telly. And you need someone who at the top who's going to put the neck on the line and say, right, you know, say to someone like Sky, well, you either show the championship or you let someone else have it, you know. To, and to be fair, just to be devil's advocate, there we had twelve years where the championship wasn't closed from, well, wasn't shown on TV from when we switched to a summer sport. Yeah, and, that, and that's fine, Dave. But but ultimately we progressed from that we had the 12 years and then it went on TV and then it disappeared from TV and you know for me that's just considering the amount of broadcast options you've got now the amount of channels the ability to live stream you know it just doesn't make any sense to me so so hopefully we've got someone who's maybe you know someone can come in who's a bit bolder and you know instead of almost like looking at fantasy land stuff he's looking mm. at stuff that's you know the problems we've got that can be fixed um, so yeah Talking about live streaming, and of course the French Federation is going to start live streaming games starting this weekend, aren't they? Yeah, I believe so. I've been trying to um, swindle an invite. They've got their own magic week, and it's after Christmas. It's in, I think it's later on in the season, but I've been trying to swindle an invite over to that. I think it's in Carcassonne. Uh, they've held it in Carcassonne yeah, over the so last two years. I think so it's got, the third I'm, time it's happening. It's in my diary, Dave. So All right. Um, we'll see if we go there. But yeah, I mean, like I said, the thing is now is anyone can, you know, I know, I know, um, we had a column on the week about it this week. I know Featherstone, for instance, record all their games and show them in full afterwards. And they, I know they've been quite keen to show some of theirs live if possible. Um, especially, I think the Toulouse one, and we've have been told not to. And it's like at the moment, it's like 
clubs or other partners are wanting to stream games, but they can't because Sky have got the rights, but then Sky aren't showing any of the games, so... So they're not using them. So yeah, in so essence, it should just, be a case of using it or lose it. And yeah, it? and that's what I mean. I think I think I think whoever takes over has got to be a bit more forceful. And you know, and obviously there's a massive problem with Sky because obviously the game's so reliant on it. But you know, I still think that ultimately, if Sky are paying that much money, it's obviously worth something to them. We've been accused already of sitting on the fence. I know, and that's that's not that doesn't sound like me, does it? Really? No, no, no. Maybe I'm I'm a mellowing in my old age. I think it's New Year's resolution. Maybe, maybe. So yes, yeah, so a bit of breaking news to go into the into our weekly show. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, to mainly focus on is that obviously we're gearing up to another Super League season. We will have uh, extra looks at the Championship, Championship One in, in future weeks. Uh, but there's been a lot of player movement, so I thought I would just highlight a couple of them. I've uh, been busy scaring all the news stories that appeared on Love Rugby League and via other outlets yeah. and uh, this is what I've uh, come up with so Cass are bringing in Gary Lowe as we knew Joe Wardley made his debut um, over the festive period Jamie Ellis via uh, Hull Kingston Rovers from Huddersfield James Green from Leeds James Clare from Leeds Corey Aston from Leeds and Mitch Clark from Hull Kingston Rovers just looking at those who do you think is going to sort of stand out well first of all you said to me we weren't going to go through them all I'm worried now. We're going to be here all day. No, no, no. no. Uh, I mean, Joe, Joe, Joe Wardle's an interesting one because I think they're looking... I don't know whether they're looking at maybe trying him in the back row even. Um, Had he gone sort of playing a little bit there Yeah, anyway, that's right. Because he's been, yeah, and obviously he played there for Scotland a thing a few times. Um, it's been interesting how he goes. Obviously, there's the big fuss over Hardacre and I think Ben Roberts is going to go to full-back, which means obviously Ellis... Or a another, he's going to end up playing at half back. Potentially a um, chance for young Truman as well. Yeah, and you know, I think I think they showed Cass last year. I mean, there was that game where Truman did he score four tries or he scored that trick at Wigan. Yeah, they showed that the way they play, they can just slot squad players in and still, you know, still do it. So you know, I'm over it. I think Cassie's media day is Tuesday, so no doubt catch up with a few of the players there. And so I think Corey Aston's another interesting one as well to see whether he can. You know, he went to Leeds and you thought, oh, that was an interesting one. He's obviously mm. moved on from there. Whether he can get some game time, obviously Powell, a bit of a connection with Daryl Powell through Mark Aston, I guess. So yes. um, it'd be interesting to see that. So, yeah, we were, talk- I mean, we were talking about Gary Lowe, like, is he going to play? You know, how many tries is he going to score? He's an interesting one as well. But I think whoever you put in that Castle team, the way they play will... Whoever sits on that left wing is going to pick up yeah, loads yeah. of tries, isn't it? It's just yeah. the way that... Well, that, I mean, that's another option as well, is, is does Eden play fullback? Yeah. Um... I mean, he you know, certainly then, did in the grand final, didn't he? Yeah, it? you know, if Eden plays at full-back and then, you know, that means Lowe or whoever else can go in on the wing. For me, the left-field signing out of all of that list is James Green, because at Lee, they hardly saw him all last season. He only played like nine times, and he's sort of been in and out at, in, in all his previous career, really. Yeah, he's he's very tall, isn't he, James Green? Mm-hmm. He's very he's tall. Six foot yeah, he's, six, seven, he's six, a very, seven. he's a, he's a he's sort of a unique. So, well, when I say unique, you know, a lot of the teams have almost like a set pattern of forwards that they play to, and, and maybe Powell's looking at him as maybe bringing something a little bit different. But I think you know the thing, with, the thing with Cass and Darrell Powell is obviously he develops players, so he might have seen something in them. You know, you look at some of the players Cass have got who've gone to another level since they've been at Casford, and that's obviously to do with the coaching. At one point, looking at Catalans, it looked like they weren't going to bring anybody in. Uh, well, yeah. I, suddenly, they've, they've, they've come up with a bit of a list. You know, Lewis Tierney, David Meany, Anthony Maria, uh, Benjamin Julien, Sammy Sony Lange, uh, and Mike McLaurin. To be honest, then, before they signed Meade and McLaurin, I was looking at Catalan thinking, you know, what are they doing? Uh, they're going to really struggle. And I still think they may struggle a little bit, but Meade and McLaurin are two serious signings to them. Um, Julien, to an extent, a, a solid signing as well. Um, but Mead and McLaurin have got that little bit of X factor that they were they were missing. But I still think, you know, a bit short in the halves. You know, they've only got Luke Walsh, really. Um, you know, and is he past his best now? They've got Albert though, as well. Yeah, Al- well, I mean, obviously a lot's going to go on Albert and, and how he runs. Um, so I still think they're short, Catalan. Um, I'm still I'm still unsure about Steve McNamara as a Super League coach as well and. Whether you know, whereas you look at say Cash, you know Daryl Powell's going to get more out of lesser players. Can Steve McNamara do that? I'm not sure. Um, the interesting one from that list, as far as I'm concerned, is Sammy Sony Lange, because 
when he came over and he played the end of the season at Lee, he looked cut above in the back line at Lee. Um, very explosive player, and I think that he'll fit in quite where mm. Christian Inu has left. Yeah, um, it'd be interesting. I mean, obviously, it's interesting when you look at who play. It is interesting looking at who teams sign because you mm. look at players and think, oh. But you know, if it fits in, everyone's got a different system, and so yeah. Uh, Huddersfield they've hardly changed yeah, it won't take long this one yeah they've only signed Adam Walton from Salford and Colton Roach from Bradford and the interesting one for me if I go on Colton Roach he's had previous chances in the professional game he's grabbed a chance at Bradford last season with both fans been outstanding for them and landed a Super League gig he always had that potential yeah I mean it's an interesting one for Huddersfield because they were really poor like first half last season and obviously got their act together got in the Super 8s did okay in the Super 8s Um I worry a little bit for them. You know, they've shown at the start of last season that they can be weak. Jake Mamo's obviously a key player for them. You know, Danny Ruff's getting toward, you know, Danny Ruff's getting older and older. How long can he carry them for? So, yeah, Huddersfield are one to... You know, for me, I, I just can't see Huddersfield getting in the top eight again. He's nearly picking his pension book up, isn't he, Danny Ruff, these days? Yeah, and, you know, and, and there's still, you know, all the hopes are sort of pinned on him still. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just... I just I look at Huddersfield, I worry a little bit. Um, especially, like I say... Because they showed at the start of last season how bad they, they were, pretty poor. You know, they were pretty dog the first half. And I mean, I mean, at the same time, you can say they were they were very good second half. But they'll be an interesting one. But for me, I, I can't see Huddersfield finishing top top eight. Adam Wall, though, I think that's an interesting sign as well because he was uh, kind of in and out at Salford as well. It's interesting that he's gone there because obviously you thought with the way you know obviously Salford have had the money pulled and you know they're probably looking at. You know, bringing through more young players, it's interesting that he's decided to go elsewhere. OK, Hull, again, this one won't take very long. They've only signed uh, three players for the new season. There's Barita Ferimo, who's coming in, who uh, played for uh, the USA, didn't he? Yeah, he's just a like for like, well, as much as you can get a like for like for Fenua, obviously. He was outstanding all yeah, those two years, wasn't and he? Yeah, and that's the thing with all the two signs Hull have made are basically replacements for two key players they've lost aren't they yeah. Mickey Pay being the other one yeah they brought, brought him back and I thought he was pretty solid for him last time right? yeah I thought they might actually have had, have had a go for Sam Moore but because um, I, 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 I can't I don't know I mean a, a few teams haven't announced as well I don't know if Sam Moore was still at Catalan I, yeah. I heard he was going um, yeah, okay. and I thought another team might have picked him up but obviously not they've also brought in uh, Hakim Maloudi as well from uh, from France he's, he's been played, playing for Doncaster hasn't yeah, he? yeah he did really well at the back end of last season so I'm looking forward to seeing if he gets a few games at Super League level and to, yeah, Hull, to show his words I mean Hull are pretty solid aren't they pretty mm. settled it'd be interesting I, I guess Hull are probably one of those teams now that they're quite happy with the team they've got it's, it's what's going to make the difference for them is if any of their youngsters can step up and go to the next level I think at Hull Kingston Rovers obviously there's the headline signing of Danny Maguire Do, yeah. can you look beyond Danny Maguire or that, that, that I mean, really we, is we've been talking act, yeah. we still I mean I, I it still feels like Hull Car have got a couple of signings up the sleeves and I think they've still got the quota spots haven't they because um, if you look at what they've you know the recruitment they've not Recruited massively, have they? To be fair, they have 36 players on the books. At the well, end of yeah, season, I mean, though. but I mean, obviously, Maguire, like you say, they've got the headline in Tommy Lee. Um, Tommy Lee's an interesting, interesting one. one. He's yeah. been around, he's got experience. And ultimately, he's not played a lot of rugby over the last three years. I was looking in, in the, the various stats books that are, are out at this stage, and I think he played nine times for St. Helens last season. Mm. He only played, what, 10 times the season before at Salford, and 13 times the season before. Yeah, you know, he joins that list of players who've played for both Hull and OKR. Okay, as well, but um, yeah, I, st- I still I'm still a little bit worried about OKR. I think, but but like because you know they're obviously looking for signings. They've obviously they're obviously trying to get someone over the line. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, a bit like Catalan really. If they make one or two signings, it might completely transform your expectations of them. And I don't know to see the Walton brother from Salford as It's interesting they've not OKR. stayed together, Dave. Right? An interesting yeah, one, it, isn't is, it? it is. Yeah, um, they've also. Uh, sort of gone for a little bit of youth as well signing Connor Williams Will Dagger of course who came through at Warrington Once, last yeah. season had, had two or three really good games yeah, and it'd be interesting to see how players like Chris Atkin does you know with the Super League chance and see whether he can step up to play in Super League week in week out I know certainly Bobby Gould in his champion isn't he? yeah I mean you know he's you know we've seen him quite a few times at Swinton and um, you know he, he came through the, the Witness Academy and he was just a player that was probably not ready for the first team, and obviously because there's no reserves, he was he was cut. You know, as soon as he hit 19, basically. Um, 
you know, he's one of them players that he's obviously got something. And this yeah. is where, I mean, like I did that video last week where I basically put what my thoughts were on uh, what I would change in rugby league in 2018. And one of those was actually concerning bringing proper reserves in. Yeah. And I'd scrap the 19th. Because I think that you could easily move players well, I just, up. Well, I just sort of think, why don't they just let let them have like for overage players in the 19th? You know, play like three or four overage players in the 19th and ah, just call it the reserves if you, you like. You just call it the yeah. reserves anyway. So you do away with that. The bulk of teams that want to go down the youth route will continue to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you're opening it up as well for the latest developers. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, ultimately you want to try and get the players in younger as you... You know the younger play. You know you want as much as there's players like Jamie Peacock who come through later on. At the moment, it's like you're almost pressuring them to be ready for the first team at 19, and if not, they're just going to disappear. Whereas if you exactly. if you if you make it reserves, they at least think, oh, well, that's it. They're not ready till 21, 22. Yeah, and there's there's several players that got the chance in Super League 21, 22. You, you look back and Stuart Donlan, for example, ended up carving out a bit of a, a good career at Super League. Well, that, I mean, it's just the whole thing, isn't it? You don't know when someone's ready. I mean. It was interesting with that the Warrington media there so I talked to Deck De- Patton obviously Warrington have run with reserves I mean they don't play many games but like if you look at halfback like Patton um, who's too old to play for the 19s mm-hmm. he might just be sat twiddling his thumbs for X amount of months and then he's thrown into the Warrington team and expected to lead them to a win and it, you know it's difficult so uh, thanks to Michael Morton, he's uh, agreeing with my 18 oh, idea. Well, I like a bit of agreement. You five or I see. I that. must have done, I yeah. must have done. Although, uh, it, no, I, I mean, I think... I think from Pete saying that I've gone a bit early, Murray, so apologies about that. I will yeah, get back to normal next week. Yeah, he, he asked he asked about <laughs> Christmas for a shave and it didn't come. No, it didn't. Um, <laughs> So, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping for a few close shaves in Super League. Oh, year. very good. Uh, Fantastic. <laughs> this is why you pay me the big yeah, one. Oh, well. <laughs> Le- yeah, so Le- we'll go- move on to Leeds quickly from that. <laughs> um, they've also not really made many changes. Obviously, the big ones are that Richie Myler coming in, Brad Dwyer from Warrington, and Nathan- Nathaniel Petiro coming in. Petiro, Petiro. Oh, I don't Petiru. know. You're the commentator, Dave, not me. Um, interesting, you know, interesting about Myler that he's sort of come back round into a top team again having left Warrington and I spoke to a few people at Warrington who were surprised it's in, you know when he was at Warrington almost Warrington didn't a few Warrington fans maybe didn't think he was good enough and then he's gone to Catalan and now one of the you know the champions have picked him up um, obviously Leeds are still in this transition phase from phasing out Sinfield Maguire Borough to the new era and obviously still winning Super League at the same time so um I think a bit like Hull really, Leeds were quite settled, they got to a point where they were quite settled, you know, they've brought Myler in and I think they'll go okay. You already name-checked Salford earlier on and uh, their recruitment has been interesting, they've brought Ben Nakabui from Gold Coast who played for Fiji in the World Cup, Uh, Daryl Walford's coming in from Newcastle, not NRL but Thunder. Uh, Gavin Benyon stepping up from Rochdale who did a tremendous job to be fair. Uh, They've got Levi... Zungo okay. Well yeah I wouldn't like to be The pitch side announcer At Salford this season Just by some of these We're going to have to go To find out How <laughs> we pronounce these <laughs> yeah. Properly aren't we To be honest uh, And interestingly enough Jack Littlejohn as well Coming in from West Tiger So I think He's played about 20 NRL games Yeah well I think I mean obviously Salford have lost Quite a few key players Haven't they You know Carney Dobson uh, Justin Carney Obviously went as well Murdoch Masilla you know, and, and Salford didn't rip away any trees in the last third, the last season, the last half, last season. They did really well up until June time, didn't they? And then just mm-hmm. sort of fell away. Um, it's all going to pin on Little John, I think. If he's good, then I think they'll be okay. But you know, no one really knows a great deal about him, so it'd be interesting to see. You know, Robert Louis had a good season last season. Can he do that again? bit more expectation on his shoulders um, you know because last season Louis was maybe fired up thinking well you know I'm behind Carney and Dobson here mm. I've got to pull my finger out whereas now you know it's going to be expected of him so yeah I mean I, I mean, I, I won't profess to know a great deal about Little John but that's going to be the key for Salford is, is how he can fill the void left from Dobson because Dobson you know you know what Dobson's a player he, he runs the show um, you know even if he's not the standout player of the game he's there in the background he's kicking games Gordon um, and obviously Salford have got all the off field fuss that always mm. seems to follow them as well so it's not as if Ian Watson can just focus on the team I mean I know the takeover's still not gone through although they're hoping for that to happen pretty soon so it's just 
it's just how much Ian Watkins can keep all that stuff away from his players. Mm. I just question whether or not it'll be another Robin Hood season. It's relying on Little John. Oh, gosh. Sorry. <laughs> right, moving on swiftly. Sent Easy, Ellen's... We, we lost about 20 viewers then. We just dropped straight off. <laughs> oh, they get, they get worse than that, folks. Uh, St. Helens, they've only brought in James Bentley. He was another player that, despite the poor season that Bradford suffered... Yeah, he stood out. He was brilliant. I mean, I mean, obviously Ben Barber's effectively a new. You know, he only played a handful that last season, so I guess Ben Barber. I wasn't including him as a new signing. Yeah, I know, but you know, he's. I think again, with I think Saint Ellis probably ended the season relatively happy. Hmm. You know, they they picked up obviously after Holbrook went. They they you know they came within, you know, seconds or whatever it was of getting into the grand final. Um, so I think Saint Ellis will go okay. I think Holbrook's probably still trying to feel out who he. Likes and doesn't like out of the out of the team. You know the interesting ones. Kyle Amor was sort of seemed to be out of favour at the end of last season. So I know, and he was outstanding in the World Cup for Ireland. Yeah, wasn't he? and you know, so obviously he's going to be. It's interesting because there'll be players chomping at the bit to show Holbrook that they want in. The big the big one for Saints. The big discussion point with Saints is, you know, who's going to play at half back because. No, it's you know low match presumably is going to play somewhere. Barber's probably going to play full back. You know, what about Smith, Richardson, Farge? You know, they've got... Mm. I think four or five players he, there for I two think, spots, isn't there? I think, for me, he's got to decide who his two are and stick with it. I think, I, that I'm a firm believer. I think if he's, he's going to say, right, we're going to do Lomax at six, Smith at seven, have Farge on the bench, Richardson's going to be the backup. Do it like that. Mm. You know, that would be me, my... But it's whether he feels like Lomax can do the job at six, because, you know, Lomax was playing at, at centre... For a bit last season when they were trying to sort of shoe him, shoe on him in the team, um, so be interesting. But I, I fancy Saints to win it. I'm glad I've got some support from Andrew as well. So keeps the jokes in. It's pantomime yeah. season. Yeah. Um, and interestingly as well, I noticed a, a comment from Derek as well saying about the uh, some about recruitment and championship. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean obviously Lee and Toronto have both recruited. Pretty, it's a bit like dog eat dog, isn't it, with them two because they're trying to sort of outdo each other. But every yeah. time a player gets released from Lee, he seems to end up at Toronto. <laughs> yeah, but then obviously Lee have sort of got their own... Out of, they've got to run out of players. Lee have sort of got their own back by side Craig Hall, which is a good, a good pick-up. Mm. We had some interesting games between them this season. OK, back in Super League, Wakefield, they've brought in four players. There's Justin Horrow, Jordan Baldwinson, Ryan Hampshire, and this man so good they named him twice, Paulie Paulie. 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 Interesting. Yeah, Wakefield again. I think they're quite. They're obviously quite happy. They've added some, you know, fairly solid signings. Them aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, the keeper Wakefield's keeping players fit. You know, if they can keep Miller and Finn fit, then they'll be okay. Um, obviously, they've got Tyler Randall as well, who came at the very back end of last season. I know he's, he's got injured. He's the got a bit of an injury, so he'll miss the start of the season. But again, he's another addition if you like to if you were comparing Wakefield to twelve months ago. He kind of perked him up as well, didn't he? When he's yeah, sort of got in the team. The big thing for Wakefield is how important was John Keir. But having said that, you know they've been top eight last two seasons, and he was only there for last season. So, okay, uh, Warrington, it's like uh, cast list of Ben Hurd, the signings <laughs> they've made. So they've brought in Akawala from Penrith Panthers, Mitch Brown, Bryson Goodwin, Tyrone Roberts, Ben Murdoch, Masilla, and the out list is just horrendous. Yeah, I mean it was the Warwick Media Day yesterday, which I was at. Spoke to a few of the players. Spoke to Steve Price and. Um, Obviously, Warrington desperate to bounce back from last season, um, you know, from finishing the bottom four. Um, it's definitely a, a new era for Warrington, really. Being, I mean, a lot to expected of Roberts. I mean, he's a very confident lad and he did very well in the NRL last season and he could absolutely light it up um, in Super League. So, it'll be interesting to see how, how he goes. Um, I worry a little bit for Warrington's depth. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't think their youngsters are a Good enough, a good enough quality in comparison to say your Wigan and your Saint Helens and your Leeds. I just don't. I, I, I'm not. You know, with all this, with all due well, respect to the Warwick youngsters, I don't think. To be fair, that's the holy grail that everybody's. Yeah, after, and, you know, and, and obviously you've got you've got to start somewhere. But you know, with all due respect to players like Philbin and Toby King and George King, I just don't think they're of the same caliber, perhaps as, as some of the other players. So it's going to be interesting for Warrington to the first game's Leeds as well. So that's a massive. In some ways, if they win that first game, everyone will forget about last season straight away. But if they lose a few early doors, people are going to be like, oh, you know, is, is it going to happen the same as last season? To be fair, it's probably a litmus test that you want, though, isn't it? Yeah, and, you know, it's 
they've only just literally they've only just got the players back now, so they've been training. I think they started training yesterday with all the England players, and obviously Murdoch still has had a few visa issues, so he isn't here yet. So, you know, when you're missing, you're missing four or five of your key players, aren't you? Because they've been at the World Cup. It's and under a new coach, there's a lot to learn, I suppose. You mentioned this media day. Tell us a little bit about it. It was at Pepin Castle, so it looked posh. Yeah, I mean, I was moaning a bit on Twitter before I went yesterday because obviously our office is about a stone's throw from the Allowell Jones Stadium. You're a better aim than I am, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and usually, usually I can just saunter over and, you know, it's whereas I have to drive 30 miles there. To, anyway, um, so the players did a load of activity and there's actually the guy who owns Petford and Castle is actually a former rugby league player, Dave. Is he? Chris Naylor. He came through the St. Helens Academy, played for Salford, played for Oldham. Right, okay. He had a cruciate ligament injury, I think, that made him retire early. But him and his family now own Petford and Castle. And Nunsmere Hall, which are, are quite big wedding venues if you're if you're up these ways. Um, are you on I'm not, no. Um <laughs> I did interview him for another client of mine yesterday, but um but yeah, so the players were abseiling, they did a Land Rover experience, they were doing all sorts and in typical media day fashion they were about an hour and a half late for us press types but um did they have you sort of running the gauntlets and stuff no no types? they didn't do anything. I did when I was coming in Ben Westwood was sort of stuck halfway down. He was abseiling from the top of the castle and was a bit stuck halfway down. I'm not sure. I think Sky were filming that, so they might have got it. But yeah, good. I'm mean, good to speak to a few of the players. You can sort of tell that Warrington are a little bit unsure. Of, you know, they're all a bit unsure of themselves at the moment because you know they've got the new area. They're all sort of, I think, you know, with all due respect to Tony, I think they're all glad mm. to be going into something different. But then at the same time, I still all think they're all still a little bit unsure about how it's all going to pan out. There's that old saying, isn't there, a change is as good as a rest, to be fair. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, all coaches have their own ideas, and it'd be interesting to see how they... I'm really looking for... I'll be there, the Warrington Leeds game, I've already booked that in. I'm really looking forward to that game, because I think it's a great, it'd be a great sort of occasion, you know, new Warrington, new era, you know, for however many years Tony's supposed to be there against the champions... <laughs> You know, obviously Leeds themselves have lost a few key players. Myla going back to Warrington, you've got Tyrone Roberts, the new kid on the block. You know, that first game's going to be a belter. Could I also say as well, though, that in essence it was like new era for Warrington? Because when they played Witness, they had that many errors. They were 26 nil down. Well, I mean, I mean, we were just talking about this before we came on about festive friendlies being a bit pointless. And I know I don't want to steal your thunder because you've got another video going out about oh. that, but... I don't think you read too much into that. They only had a handful of the players. It sounded like they were pretty poor. I mean, I didn't go to the game because I was working elsewhere, but it sounded like they were pretty poor, but I don't think it makes makes a great deal of odds. OK, moving on to uh, nearest and dearest, Witness, your favourite team. Yeah. Um, Kristen Inu, Kato Otio, Sam Wilde and Wellington Elbert. In fact, I'm loving the names. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the uh, well, it's funny because there's, pu- there's two pubs in Witness called the Albert and the Wellington. <laughs> so that's it's not going to be spending half yeah, a week in one and half that, a week in the other. Is that's it? quite funny. I, 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 I'm hoping that they're both fighting over sponsorship for him at the moment. Um, yeah, interesting one, Witness, because I think you know uh, they struggled last season. They had a lot of injuries last season, and, and obviously there was a lot of reliance on the young players. And it's again a bit like I can't remember who we were talking about, but it's all going to depend on. Can them young players step up to the to the next level? Well, there's lots like Ollie yeah. Ashall. Yeah, and, I mean, I don't uh, think Ashall, I, I don't necessarily think Ashall will play that much because obviously you've got Hambry and probably Craven, but it's more like probably it's probably your walkers, isn't it? Yeah, the, probably you, you, you know the Chapel Isles and maybe Owen Farmworth in in the pack because they've lost they've lost quite a few players. Witness, uh, you know, especially in the pack, you look they've lost Buchanan and Manuka Fowler who, who are pretty re, you know pretty regular start you know. Features. Just out of interest, you mentioned the Jack Buchanan. Has he popped up anywhere? No, well, I was. We were talking about. I think Witness are still trying to get someone in. They're still trying to get a forward in um, from down under. Cause has he got, popped up anywhere? They've got no, he hasn't. And no. I think that there's a quota spot available. And I'm wondering whether Witness's plan B might be to bring Buchanan back. Right. Um, I, I know they did offer him a deal, but he felt that it wasn't good enough. But I know he was happy at Witness and. You know, he was playing good minutes, so I, I know that, you know, I know from speaking to a few people yesterday that they did have a forward who they were expecting to come in and he pretty much signed on the dotted line and then it all fell through at the last minute. Similar to the Matthews situation, because obviously they'd signed Will Matthews and he decided not to come, so. So, yeah, witness a bit like Hulk, I've got a quota spot and 
um, are actively looking to sign someone. Do you reckon that, you know, given the time of year that we're at, and there is still signings to be made, there's still players that are available, that in some respects maybe agents are sort of playing clubs off against each yeah, other? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, obviously quota spots are a, a premium, so I know speaking to Mitch Brown, for instance, yesterday, he wasn't sure where he was going to end up after he left Lee because obviously quota spots are taken. One obviously came up at, at Warrington and he ended up there. Um, so... Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Witness typically have signed quite a few players in January over the past few years. I think Gil Goodson came in January. They had Cameron Phelps one year. Um, Gareth Hock came quite late on in, in the day. So, uh, you know, clubs are... The marketplace is still the open. The marketplace is still open. OK, moving on. Wigan, they've just brought in the two players, Dan Sargentson re-signing and uh, Gabriel Hamlin, who we don't really know a lot about. Yeah, Wigan, Wigan's an interesting one, isn't it? Wigan just cope, don't they? Yeah, and, and you, know, we, we, you know, we saw they lost the two players this week in McLaurin and Gellin, and you know, I had a few conversations with people where it's like, well, McLaurin was injured for quite a while and they managed without him. I think one of the problems Wigan have got is obviously they've brought Tompkins and Lulawai back on big money and they've mm. probably not performed up to expectation but I think Tompkins will go really well this season I think for being fresh and as a point to prove I think he sounds like he's going to end up playing standoff or scrum half with George Williams um, I think I think Tompkins will have a big year this year uh, well that's us going through the transfers as far as the Super League is concerned we will do championship and league ones in, in future shows I just want to mention some of these friendly fixtures that are coming up on the uh, scene. So on Sunday we've got Wakefield against Halifax, Hull Kingston Rovers against York. We were due to have uh, Rochdale against Oldham, which we were hoping to bring to you live via the airwaves of Love Rugby League and via Facebook audio. Um, that's been offset. That's now taking place on Wednesday, but we're hoping to do exactly the same thing. Yeah, hopefully I'm looking forward to that. a bit of Wednesday night rugby. And before we go, Kevin Blackburn's happened. What's happened with Greg McNally? He's still at Lee, isn't he? Uh, he's not. No, he's finished. But I don't know. Oh, I don't finished, know where right? he's land. I don't know where he's landed up yet. We'll find. We'll try and find out for you, Kevin, and we'll uh, we'll let you know. Okay. Thanks for joining us, and that's us signing off on the first edition of Love Rugby League Weekly 2018.